your friends in Christ, washed in the blood of the Lamb, I invite you to please come to me together as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your sacrifice, for giving everything for us. We thank you that you have given your life, that you have given your death, so that we might have eternal life with you forever. We pray that each day that we would live as your children, as your people, who have been washed and made clean, and now may we live knowing your generosity, the the giving of your heart. May we reflect that love and generosity in our lives. That as we give of our time, our talents, and our treasures, that we may do so faithfully, not out of obedience, but out of cheerfulness, honoring you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, in case you hadn't caught the theme so far, we are talking about money today. We're talking about giving in particular today, and perhaps a lot of times your heart suddenly groan when you hear that. You know, I I know my heart does. Whenever I get that phone call, and someone calls up on the phone, and such and such from the American, uh, American Cancer Society calls, and they say, today we'd like to know if you'd be willing to give, insert the money here. Have any of you received those calls? Maybe not from the American Cancer Society, but maybe from a police athletic club, from other groups asking for money. And all of a sudden, we're ready to hang up almost as soon as we pick up the phone. Well, please don't hang up today, because as we talk about giving, it's not just about money. It's not just about whether or not we feel like giving, whether or not we want to give, whether or not we feel we owe something, but it's about heart. And that's why we're going to talk about giving today, because it's about heart, our relationship with God. Our relationship with God and what he has given for us, what he has done for us, everything that we have, recognizing that it is from God. Now, it also can be said that if we read through the Bible, money is also important to God. Giving is important to Him. We just wrapped up a series on the parables in our Tuesday night study, and we only looked at six of those parables out of about 40, depending on how many you count in terms of if you count two for, uh, anyhow, uh, duplicates. But in half of those parables, nearly half of those, Jesus talks about money. And even beyond that, He talks about our physical needs, our physical wants, our physical, what we have physically from him. For instance, the prodigal son. It really doesn't talk much about money, but it does talk about that inheritance and, wh- how, and the way the son used it. And so money is important to God. The way we use it is important. We go all the way back to the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. It talks about how important money is to God. One of my favorite verses, and it's one that I, I, I hadn't really known very well before, but it's one that it, it brings new light to, is new light to me uh, as we went through the 613. And this is Leviticus chapter 19. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's try Not 18, because 18 is the sexual chapter. I'm sorry. Okay, now we're ready. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edge of your field, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time, or pick the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. Now that may just sound like farming practice and sound like something that God's telling us to do in terms of, well, that's way back then, but it's actually talking about giving and generosity. It's talking about the heart of the people. Do not go to the edge of your field because there are hungry people who will pick the grain on your edge edge of your field who need to eat. Do not go a second time over your grapes because those grapes that you leave the first time will be left there for those who are serving, those who are are less fortunate. This is about giving. The scripture starts, it goes through, and ends with giving. Most importantly, the giving that God has given to us. But today we notice that there's a strong law as well. If we remember our reading from Malachi chapter 3, God is very strong in his word, and he says, when we do not give, we are literally robbing him. Did you catch that today as as we were hearing that text? When we don't give, it is robbing God. Those are strong words when you think about it. It's really, as we think about the way we spend our money, our time, our treasures, our talents, are we robbing God? When you think about where you spend your money, where you spend your time, and where you spend your talents, Where do you spend it? Even if you don't keep a budget, you know generally where you spend it. Do you spend it on a game of golf? That's a good thing to spend money on. On your groceries. You spend it on putting a roof over your head. 
Money is important, but it's not the most important thing. It's that heart relationship. You know, there's a kind of a falsehood that's out there that being wealthy is a sin. Have you guys heard that before? Sometimes people think that being wealthy is a sin. That if God has blessed you, that, you, that it's a sin. But in truth, when we talk about wealth, even as, God, as Jesus uses the parables, he talks about it in a way that the sin comes in where the heart is. The rich man who stored up extra grain in, his, in the four extra barns, it was not that he had grown so much grain that he had so much, but it was the fact that he was hoarding it, keeping it to himself and not trusting the Lord. The rich man in Lazarus, it wasn't about the fact that that man was rich. It was about the fact that he never cared for Lazarus and never even recognized the poor outside of his gate. Scripture says in 1 Timothy that the, the love of money is the root of all evil. And so maybe that's where people get that idea from, that idea that maybe money is evil. But in truth, it's the use of money. In fact, Jesus says in Mark, or rather uh, Matthew chapter 16, <clears throat> and the, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with very much and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much notice again it's not a question of how much it's a question of how, how we use the gifts and that's true in all of our lives. Like I say, whether it's money or something else. It's true whether you're wealthy beyond measure. It's true if, you're, if you have no money to speak of. But in all those cases, it comes back to our relationship with God. It comes back to two things. Our trust in God and our trust in His generosity. And when we are not fully trusting God, we are not going to be able to be generous. We are not going to be able to give. Because when we are not trusting in God fully, we are going to set up a ledger and we are going to determine how much we can give out of the poorness of our faith instead of the richness of the grace. Let me say that again. Instead of determining how much we give from the richness of God's grace, we'll determine it from the poorness of our faith. And our faith is indeed quite poor. Not one of us, not one of us can talk about having great and amazing faith. Not even the greatest preacher on television could speak of that. Because truly the faith, faith is a gift from God. Truly the faith that we have is a gift from Him. And truly, just like all the other gifts, the physical gifts we have, our faith is a gift to us. Our faith is a gift that we are meant to share and that we are meant to give. We are meant to share with others and we are meant to proclaim. But so often we get caught up in the worries of this life and in the ways that we have to protect what we have. Hold on to what we have. We make money and we make our time and talents the most important thing instead of looking at the way God has blessed us. Think about it for just a minute. In your life, can you ever truly say that you've gone hungry? And I'm not talking about going a couple days without food. I'm talking about going weeks without food. Me neither. Many of you today, when you go home, you have a home to go to. All of us, when we think about it, we're blessed abundantly. But so often it's hard for us to look at those blessings. So, hard it's for us, so often it's hard for us to stop and look at what God has given us and see how God is giving us and continues to provide for all of our needs. And when we look at our things and, don't, and look at all that we have and don't realize those are gifts from God, that's sin. Not just, I'm not just talking about giving here, but I'm talking about the way that we hold on to our things, the way we hoard our things, the way we use our time and our talents. Think about it this way. If you told your spouse and your kids that you love them and that you care for them, but you never spent time with them, what message would they get? If you tell God that, that you love Him and you care for Him, but well, whenever I get around to it, I'll be generous. What message are we sending? No, thankfully, God knows our sinful hearts. Thankfully, He knows our weak faith. And thankfully, He was not willing to just invest silver and gold, but He was willing to invest His entire life for us. 
See, God, He is in all the way with us. God is in it in for the long haul for every single day. And He was willing to give everything. See, silver and gold, that's going to pass away. Precious gems, they are not going to hold up to the test. Only His precious blood and His body could pay the price for us. We just sang in our song, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid every for every sin. Not only our sins of selfishness, not only our sins of, of want and desire, but He paid for everything. For the sins that are on our, on our, on, in our minds, on our hearts, the sins that come out of our mouths, mouths, the sins that we do with our hands. Jesus paid it all and He has given us something beyond this earth, but an inheritance in heaven. In 1 Peter, Peter does a beautiful job in 1 Peter chapter 1 talking about this inheritance. An inheritance that is not temporary. An inheritance that will not pass away. An inheritance that is imperishable. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. This is the promise we're given. An inheritance that will never pass away. An inheritance that will not go. An inheritance of for the forgiveness of our sins that guarantees us eternal life. And that is the generosity of our God. Not just what we have on this earth, the needs that we have each day, the wants that we have each day, but everything that we need and want, including eternal life. Life forever with Him. That is the promise He gives us. That is the generosity of our God to us. And that is the generosity that He has called us to reflect to others. That is the gen- the, our, our poor faith faith and our selfishness we bring to the cross and we leave it at the cross and we go from the cross and we proclaim what God has given us and it may be in the form of an offering envelope but I want you to see it as so much broader than that giving does not have to only be in the form of an offering envelope that is a great way to to support ministry but there are so many other ways out there just think about the fact that there are people around you every single day who do not have faith What about if you took time, even two minutes of your day, five minutes of your day, took some of that time God has given you and talked about your faith with them? What about if you were driving along the road and you happen to be able to change a tire so you pull off and you see the person who's who's stuck there? God has given you that talent. And maybe there, what about the children who are in Africa in our own backyard? God has given you treasures beyond measure to support and love. And when you think about it, God opens up for you each and every day opportunities to share and to care, to give those, share, share those treasures with others. It may, you may not have a lot of money. I know that some of you don't. But maybe God has got, given you a talent that someone else doesn't have. Maybe you have a lot of time now on your hands. A gift or a bill, the gift to be able to, to call someone on the phone, to visit with somebody, to give someone a ride to church. You know, these are not small things. These are the ways that God has blessed us that we might bless others. These are things that He has given to us in our lives, in our day to day lives, so that we might be generous, so that we might reflect that same generosity that He has shown to us. And so often, though, so often, it's hard for us to see those things. It's hard for us to reach out and to share those things because we do get caught up on what it's going to benefit us, the way that it's going to help me, me, me. And we need to turn over that me attitude to God and see that He said, you. You. You are the ones I give my life for. You are the ones I give everything for. And have that same self-sacrificial attitude to give not out of obligation, but to give generously from our hearts. Paul said it in 2 Corinthians, our reading from today, our epistle. God doesn't want us to just sit here and give because we feel like we have to. Give because we feel like, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. Give and give cheerfully. Give of your heart as you have decided in advance to do. In advance to do. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. I encourage you to read not only that text, but read the verses before. Paul was talking about how important it was that the church in Corinth, 
Support the other churches. Support the fellow believers. Support those who are in need. Paul wasn't just talking about pie-in-the-sky ideas. He wasn't just talking about, well, in a way, this is how we should do things in the perfect world. He's talking about giving and sharing in the real world. He's talking about loving in a very real way. And I want to take a moment right now. No, it's not the very end of the sermon yet. But I want to take a moment right now for you guys to think about the ways that God has blessed you. I want you to think and just think you could start with the day that he's given you, wherever you would like to start. But I want to take just a couple moments for you to silently think about that. Think about the ways that just today God has blessed you. You know, I won't ask you to share your lists with me. But I imagine even though it's only about 10 o'clock in the morning, your list is pretty long already. And if, and if you think about it, if you think about just this weekend, if you think about just this week, the many ways God has blessed you, truly we are blessed people. Truly we are blessed people because we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We are blessed people because God has provided for us in ways that we never could even imagine. We are blessed people because God has given us more than we could ever want. And ultimately, we are blessed because we have an inheritance in heaven with God. May God bless your heart with a generous heart, a generous spirit to share his love, to share his gifts, to share his gospel. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, I give thanks to you for blessing us with opportunity to come together this day. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us offerings and gifts beyond measure, that you have blessed our lives and our hearts in ways that are so abundant that it is innumerable and that we cannot even count. Lord, help us each day to remember your generosity to, to us. Help us each day to remember the ways that you have blessed our lives and the ways that you have blessed our hearts, the ways that you have walked with us. And forgive us for those times when we are selfish and those times when we don't trust in you. Lead us again back to your cross where we see the ultimate gift, the ultimate gift of your life at Calvary. Lead us to that cross where we might see the forgiveness of our sins, the restoration of our hearts. Lord, help us each day to celebrate the richness of your grace despite the poorness of our faith, that we might know we have an inheritance with you that is imperishable. This we pray through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Lord. Amen.